Somebody tag me, you guys. I'm so excited. Hello, my bestie boos. Welcome back to my channel. I'm the mom Latrice. And today I was tagged in the fragrance personality tag. Yay! Thank you so much to Cree Taylor. You are such a sweetheart, honey. Like I've been wanting to do this challenge, this tag for so long, but I didn't want to be that girl. I didn't want to be thirsty. And I was like, you know what? My time will come. I'm a little old nobody. Ain't nobody going to tag me. And so I'll just wait until another day, another time, another tag, another challenge. So thank you so much, Cree. I appreciate you. You guys go check out her channel. She is such a sweetheart. Thank you so much, bestie boo. If you like people who keep it real, if you like people who keep it positive and who keep it pushing, then this is the place for you. Now let's get into this video. Hey you guys, it is literally 10 o'clock at night and I am going to try not to talk so loudly because I'm sure that my neighbors are sleeping, but I got tagged in the video. I was out to dinner with my sister and my kids and as soon as I got home, I was just like, let me pull myself together. I don't care how tired I am or whatever. I'm just so grateful that I'm tagged. So I want to go ahead and get this video out for y'all so y'all can get to know me a little bit better, okay? So the originator of this tag is Simply Aisha, okay? I don't follow her, but um, I saw this challenge. And so I'm going to subscribe to her as soon as I finish this video right now because I've been hearing so much. And I think it's so creative to do this challenge and like to get um, people to look at us other YouTubers who are in the same kind of space in the same kind of genre and I think it's such a genius idea and kind of like helps to form a community so thank you so much Simply Aisha for doing this tag this challenge I appreciate you so much you guys there were so many YouTubers that I saw do this challenge and I was having some FOMO I wanted to do it so bad but like I said I didn't want to be that girl I didn't want to be thirsty I didn't want to fake like I got tagged and all this stuff like I keep it real around here nobody tagged a little on me okay so I was just gonna go without it so I'm so appreciative to Cree for actually tagging me so the first question I actually wrote these questions down when it was first going around so I hope these are the same ones that Cree put in her video I did watch her video and I loved all of her pics um but it says fragrance personality tag what's your boss babe scent okay my boss babe scent a scent that I wear when I want to feel like a boss I have a lot of meetings. I work around a lot of doctors, PhDs, MDs, things like that. So when I want to feel like a boss, when I'm going out at night or if I'm like going to be around a lot of people and I'm feeling like a little insecure or I want to like get the vibe and feel like that girl, honey, I usually wear Leap Intense. She is a beast, honey. Like if I want to feel like a boss, babe. I'm going to put on some leave intense. The orange blossom and the vanilla is really strong. The lavender in here is pretty strong as well. She is a beast. She projects. She is going to announce me before I walk in that room. And I don't need to say a word because people going to know that it's me in that room. <laughs> But if I really am feeling like a beast, like when I went to go take my um, driver's license pictures, I was feeling kind of nervous about it because I hate my driver's license pictures. And so I was like, oh, I want my picture to come out good. And I wanted to uplift my spirits and I wanted to feel like a boss. I combine leave intense with good girl, very good girl. These two together is really pretty. And you would think they wouldn't go together that well, but they go together great okay the lychee in here mixes well with the orange blossom the rose in here mixes well with the vanilla in here like these two together will definitely make you feel like you are a boss babe okay so if that's something you're looking for this is it this is absolutely my go-to combination when i want to feel like that girl okay when i want to get a little confidence and i don't care about like offending people or projecting really loudly in my space so that's my boss babe scent. The second question is, what's your go-to bedtime scent? And this one was really hard for me because I have two that I reach for really often. Um, and I was like kind of torn. I wasn't sure which one to go with. So I'm going to do both. Okay. I know it's a little bit of a cheat. I'm cheating a little bit, but it's okay because it's my channel, right? I can do what I want. <laughs> so the first one is Vanilla Woods by The Seven Virtues. I love wearing this to bed. It's something about this that just reminds me of like a homey environment. I don't know what it is. I know my mom, when I was growing up, she used to have like that dried potpourri sitting on the table in the living room, like on the coffee table. Did you guys ever have like the dried potpourri leaves? 
to me for something about this scent makes me think of that like the dry potpourris from like the 70s and 80s um sitting on the table in your grandma house or your auntie house or your mom house something in here just reminds me of that this is a beautiful vanilla it has some caramel in it it's just so comforting to me and i feel like it's comforting to me because of the vanilla but also because it reminds me of that potpourri i don't know but yeah that's definitely a bedtime scent that i really like when i get out of the shower and i'm crawling into bed another one i like is um zadig and voltaire's this is her this is chestnut it's a little bit spicy it's sweet, it's very creamy and lactonic, but it's also something in here that's kind of warm and comforting. And I think it's the chestnut. I don't have a lot of fragrances with the chestnut in here, but it's kind of sweet. It kind of smells like a little bit like hot cocoa if it was made with like soy milk or almond milk or coconut milk. Like that's kind of what this reminds me of because it's not it's not like really chocolatey although there may be some cacao in here i'm not sure don't quote me but yeah this one is so pretty it's creamy but it's also soft and comforting and warm and i i'm usually reaching for either this one or this one when i go to bed so either one of these i would say is definitely my go-to bedtime scent the third question is what's your hug in a bottle this was easy for me because it's something about this fragrance that just reminds me of like a comforting hug, like someone wrapping their arms around me and just hugging me and saying everything's going to be okay. It's something about this fragrance that just does that for me. And this is um, Philosophy's Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere. I really, really enjoy this scent a lot. It's vanilla. Ugh. It's so sweet and warm and it honestly smells like fresh cream and warm cashmere. Like if you are wearing like a cashmere sweater, this is not cashmere, honey, but we gonna pretend today. <laughs> if you were wearing like a cashmere sweater and you just wrapped it around you and then you felt so warm and comforted, like this honestly feels like a hug in a bottle to me. And I usually wear this like, I wear this to bed too, but because I could only pick like, one or the other i picked this as the warm hug because it's just something about this fragrance that's just so soothing to me it really is i, I really don't know what it is but yeah it's sweet but not overpoweringly sweet this is such a pretty fragrance i hate that it only comes in like these smaller bottles this is like really good and i would buy a big bottle of this if if they sold it um the next question is what's your secret weapon of mass seduction this was easy this was not even a question, honey. My secret weapon of mass seduction is Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle. This fragrance is extremely sexy. It's pear, it's leather, it's sweet. It's also a little bit fruity because that pear really is at the top. But once it dries down, it just becomes this sexy fragrance. It makes you feel a little dirty. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to be like weird about it, but it's something about that leather in here that makes it a little naughty. It makes it a little naughty. And a lot of men do like this fragrance. If I want to feel sexy, if I want to feel like I'm about to run all these men today, I definitely wear this. This is a beautiful fragrance. Like, I mean, if the shape of the bottle doesn't tell you anything, I don't know what will, but yeah, Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Belle is definitely my secret weapon of mass seduction. The next question is, what's a fragrance you never wear, but you can't part with? And I love this question. I love this question because there's one fragrance that I'm always thinking of that I'm like, oh, I kind of want to wear that today. And I never reach for it. And I don't know what it is because I love this perfume, but I never wear it and i don't understand why like even if like right now i'm thinking of it like oh, i'll wear that tomorrow and then tomorrow watch i'll wake up and i'm not gonna wear it and i really don't know why this is c passione armani c passione and i'm trying to look at where the juice is it's pretty much really high at the top this is such a beautiful woody fruity floral 
It has a lot of fruits in it. It's very sweet. It has a woodiness in here. I want to say there's cedar. I'm not exactly sure. Y'all, this is a beautiful fragrance, but it definitely projects a lot. I think it's because it's kind of middle of the line when it comes to seasons. I don't necessarily think of this as a spring fragrance, but I don't really think of it as a summer fragrance. And I definitely don't consider it a strictly a winter fragrance. I, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's because I can't really put this in a specific category as far as fragrances go. And I think that's why I don't wear it as much as I would like to. But I'm thinking about putting this on my next perfume tray because I just feel like she deserves some love. She deserves some love. I think I've had this since 2020, I believe. I don't remember what year it was released, but I've had this since 2020 or 2021. I can't remember. Whatever year it was released, that's the year I got it. But this is a beautiful, fruity, floral, woody scent, and she deserves to be worn, y'all. I need to put this on my perfume tray. I'm gonna put this on next month's perfume tray. I promise myself, listen, girl, you better put this on your perfume tray. Okay, y'all hold me to it. Keep me honest. The next question, question number six is, what's one of your favorite fragrances that you don't wear enough? Okay, this one's easy because I already know, Idole Now. I bought this when it was first released. It definitely was released in 2023. And I want to say it was like August or September. I can't exactly remember, but I bought it the first month it was released. This is the only Idole flanker that I own. I don't even own the original Idol. It's so pretty. I adore this fragrance. It's rose, but it's vanilla. It's grounded. It's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. I feel like it's really crowd pleasing. The rose isn't mature in here at all, but it's also not really youthful. I feel like this is a rose and a vanilla that anybody could wear for any type of occasion, for work, for going out, for dinner, for your friends, for a date night. I mean, like, I feel like this fragrance is so versatile and I really, really love it. But the dent is okay, but I'm surprised that the dent is not as a lot lower. I'm surprised the dent isn't like down to here because the way I love it so much, I feel like the dent should be deeper. And I don't know why I don't wear it more, but I think I'm going to end up putting this on the perfume tray as well because I definitely want to get a lot more use out of that fragrance because it's so pretty, y'all. It's so pretty and I pretty just don't know why I don't just dig into it. Question number seven is, what's a fragrance that you would recommend to a beginner that wants to smell unique? Now, this one was kind of hard for me because usually beginners, I recommend like Chanel Chance Otandra or Marc Jacobs Perfect or maybe like a vanilla like Billie Eilish or something like that. But the question says a beginner that wants to smell unique. And none of those fragrances smell unique. They're just beginner friendly. So in order to satisfy like the unique quotient, I thought about including um, Gentle Fluidity Gold by Macy Francis Kirk John because this is, I feel like, beginner friendly. It's also unique because it does have coriander and some woody notes in here that make it different than like a generic vanilla type fragrance. It's definitely a unique fragrance, but like if you go to some parts of U.S., if you go, I can't even talk. If you go to some parts of the U.S., you are going to smell this everywhere. So if you like, if you go to Atlanta, you're going to smell this everywhere. If you go to some parts of L.A., you're going to smell this everywhere. So while it is a unique fragrance, you may not smell unique depending on where you are. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to say that one, although that is one option, depending on what part of the country you live, depending on what part of the you know world you live in. So I decided to go ahead and go with BDK's Gris Charnel. I feel like BDK's Gris Charnel is definitely satisfying the answer to that question because I do feel like it is beginner friendly. But it's definitely also a unique fragrance. I don't smell this everywhere I go. Oh, it's very sweet. I feel like it's crowd pleasing. It's a tea fragrance. You smell a little bit of a fruitiness from the fig, but it's not sickeningly sweet. It's a little bit fresh with that tea, but it's, it's a very beautiful fragrance. I think this fragrance is stunning. 
stunning. When I first smelled this, like it took me on a bit of a scent journey, you know, through my nose. It was so pretty and I absolutely had to have it. The dent is not really huge, although I do have a little bit of a dent. I would definitely recommend this to a beginner who wants to smell different. Okay, so if you're open to trying a new type of fragrance, you're trying to venture away from like standard vanillas, florals, citruses, things like that, definitely get your nose on BDK's Gris Charnel because it, it is definitely a unique fragrance, but I feel like it's also pretty crowd pleasing. It's beautiful, you guys. It has a great sillage as well. So question number eight is, what's a fragrance you love that everyone seems to hate? Now, I don't think nobody hates fragrances necessarily like hate is a really strong word <laughs> i don't well let me stop because y'all some of them perfumes i smelled last year i was like who likes this but i would never say hate because somebody love it right but i put gabrielle chanel gabrielle i feel like this does not get a lot of love anymore and i hear all the time that it smells really mature but I think it's so classic. I think it is a beautiful fragrance. Um, it's definitely along the vibes of Chanel, along the vibes of the Cocos, number five, stuff like that. Although I don't like original Coco. I don't like original Chanel number five. I do like Mademoiselle and I do like um, Mademoiselle Intense. So I feel like if you like Coco Mademoiselle, you would definitely like um, Chanel Gabrielle. This is the original Gabrielle. This is not the Essence or Naturel or whatever other flankers that they have. I really enjoy this fragrance. I have the little one. I think it's really beautiful. Um, but a lot of people are saying that it smells mature. I enjoy a mature fragrance. I don't care, you know, if things smell mature because I'm mature myself. Like mature don't mean, oh, it just means like a classic scent profile from an error maybe a few decades ago or a decade or two ago and i don't think there's anything wrong with that okay as long as it smells good i don't care about that so chanel gabrielle is definitely one that i would say it doesn't get as much love as it used to anymore but i still like it so question number nine is what's an overhyped fragrance that you currently own okay i was kind of scared to say this one <laughs> Y'all don't come for me, okay? If you love a fragrance, just go on and love it, honey. You don't got to be mad at me for speaking my truth. This is my truth. <laughs> okay, Parfums the Marley Valaya. Okay, stop. Listen, put it in the comments below if you love this fragrance, if you hate this fragrance, if you think it's overhyped. These are just opinions, you guys. I still bought it. I'm not selling it. I'm going to keep it and I'm going to use it. But I feel like the hype that it got was just so out of control, wild. Like to me, compare the hype that this got compared to the hype that Althair is getting is like on the same level. But I feel like Althair is so much prettier. And I don't know if it's because Althair is a vanilla and that's why I'm like giving it the grace that I'm not giving this one. But yeah, this one is very musky to me. And I'm also not the biggest fan of like heavily musk fragrances like musks that are really strong and deep and like overpower the entire fragrance I feel like this is citrusy and musky but mostly musk more than anything else and I think because I'm not the biggest fan of musk that's why I'm kind of hating on this one but I mean she's pretty she's cute she's all of those things honey but I think the hype was just like a little too much because you know it did not live up to the hype in my opinion and that ain't nobody fault, but I still own it, honey. Obviously, she ain't going nowhere. Number 10 is what fragrance is on the chopping block? Okay, so I actually have a few fragrances that are on the chopping block right now. Because <laughs> I am getting really specific about the things that I love. And I kind of want to pare down my collection right now. Um, but one of the ones that's at the top of the chalking block, and some of you might be surprised to hear this because it is a very well-loved fragrance. And this is the time of year and the season that you would want to wear this. And this is Victor and Rolf's Bon Bon. I mean, I've used a bit of a dent of it, right? But I'm just like, this is just not it for me. Like, I feel like when I first smelled this, I fell in love with this. And I paid full retail price at Ulta for this because when I first sprayed it, I was in love. But I feel like now it's just not doing anything for me. You know, it's just not doing anything for me. 
it's pretty it's caramel it's along the lines of like Prada candy it's a little powdery to me um it's a pretty fragrance to me it's not beast low and I think I probably am not the biggest fan anymore because it doesn't project and I've become such a fan of fragrances that are screamers that are beasts that last a really long time that have a heavy monster sillage and I'm just not getting that with Bon Bon and I feel like that's why I'm not loving it as much anymore but yeah this one she on the chopping block y'all so y'all might see this go up for sale in the near future okay but I do want to do my full fragrance collection before I start like purging you know through some of the fragrances that I'm not like in love with anymore so after I do my full fragrance collection video she probably she probably gonna be out of here the next fragrance that I oh what's the question number 11 okay y'all I'm almost done fragrance number okay question number 11 what's your latest fragrance purchase Okay, my latest fragrance purchase, if y'all have not been able to tell based on my She Loves underscore fragrance Instagram page or based on some of the things that I post on my YouTube shorts, I have gone down the Arabian fragrance rabbit hole. I have been buying Arabian fragrances left and right. I feel like the last probably 15 purchases were Arabian fragrances because like I'm just in love with them, y'all. So my latest purchase is from the... um. This is actually from Paris Corners, the Emir line. This is Frenetic Delicious. And this is a Paris Corner fragrance, but they have a line that's called Emir Frenetic Delicious. <sighs> ah! This is a dupe of Dior's Feb Delicious. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Feb Delicious. And if you are a gourmand lover, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Dior Feb Delicious. I think they reformulated it in 2018. It had went away and then it came back. And like this is super hyped. The original fragrance, it, Feb Delicious. This one. This smells just like it to me. And the original fragrance is very expensive and I'm really trying to cut down on my spending and enjoy the things that I have. So although I really want the original Feb Delicious, I said I'm going to try out this dupe and like get through this. And once I get through this, hopefully I'll have my finances more in order and maybe have saved enough actually cash that aside to purchase a big purchase like that, like the original. But y'all, this is beautiful. This took me on a scent journey, an olfactory journey, okay? When I first sprayed it, it was a little minty, but I could smell the cherry. And then when it dried down, after 30 minutes, I am in love with this. Like, this smells just like the original to me. Now, the original does have its own nuances. There's definitely things about the original one that this one is not going to replace that no dupe, in my opinion, can replace. If you have a sensitive nose, you are going to be able to tell the difference. But y'all, this one is so stinking good. It is so stinking good. So yeah, this is my latest fragrance purchase. Number 12 is what fragrance is on the top of your wish list? Okay. The fragrance that is on the top of my wish list right now is by Celine. I love Celine fragrances. Celine fragrances are such high quality. They are beautiful. I feel like they're unique. And there's three that I actually want from that house, maybe four. But I think the one on the top of my list right now is Celine Reptile. Celine Reptile, like when you look at the notes, it doesn't look like anything that I would actually want. Like... I would never want that fragrance in my collection based on the notes alone. But I happened to be in Vegas last week and I was walking around Vegas and I think I was in the Wynn Hotel and we were walking around the Wynn Hotel and the Wynn Hotel has a Celine store in there. And so I walked in because I'm aware that they have fragrances and, you know, I'm talking to the sales associate and I honestly wanted to smell Black Tie by Celine because I had never smelled it before, but I knew that it's one that was like super hyped up. So I smelled that one and then he ended up letting me spell parade, parade, I believe is how you pronounce it, although it's spelled parade in English, and reptile. I ended up falling in love with parade and reptile. Like I love both of those fragrances by Celine, but I think what I'm going to do is purchase Celine reptile. 
I'm waiting for, you know, I don't know if Celine has discounts. I don't know if Celine is sold at like major department stores like Neiman Marcus or Bloomingdale's or Saks or Macy's. I don't know if Celine is sold at those stores which i don't know why they wouldn't be so i'm definitely going to try to see if i can find a sale get a deal but i will definitely be purchasing celine reptile in the near future because it smells absolutely amazing okay for my last question i had to get up and go get it because <laughs> i thought i had put it on this table by me but it wasn't the last question is what what's your number one fragrance for life and anybody that has watched any of my videos the last few months, I feel like you already know the answer to this question. Um, my number one fragrance for life, if I had to pick only one fragrance to get me through for the rest of my life, if my collection was burned to the ground or all of my bottles broke, please don't ever let that happen. Like, I don't even want to say that out loud. That's kind of freaking me out. But if that happens, my first purchase would be Donna Born and Roma OG. This to me is the quintessential feminine, flirty, versatile, beautiful fragrance. It's a ambery, woody vanilla that is versatile. This is definitely one that I would recommend to a woman who wants to smell amazing or anyone who wants to smell amazing. Fragrance is not gender. There's no gender to fragrances in my opinion. Like I'm going to wear what I want to wear when I want to wear it and I recommend that you do the same. Um, but yeah, this is the number one fragrance that I will always have in my collection. If I run out, I will always buy a backup. I think this is a beautiful, versatile fragrance for anyone. Like I love this one, you guys. So that brings my fragrance personality tag question video to an end. Like I had so much fun filming this video. I feel like you get to really know people through their fragrance choices, the things that they decide to pick to describe them. Like I learned so much from a bunch of YouTubers when they did this video and I'm so glad that I was tagged. Thank you, Cree, again, um, so that I could do it so that you guys could learn a little bit more about me. Um, I don't know if my energy is low. Like I said, it's like 1030 at night at this point. And so I've been running all day and I'm a little bit tired, but just doing this video just like literally energized me because I'm addicted to fragrance, you guys, as you know. And so any type of tag or challenge or anything like that, please include me in all of them, honey, because I think they're so fun. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned a little bit more about your girl. Okay, I hope you are subscribed. Please like, share this video, comment down below if you learned something new about me or if you thought I was gonna pick something else or if you're surprised with one of the answers to my questions, put it down below as well. Thank you so much. And again, I love you, love you, love you, love you.